if there could be a prize for least expectations when watching a movie for the first time, Disney's so-called classic, The Love Bug, would win in my case. I knew about the cultural icon that is Herbie, and I had seen the sequel in 2006, but beyond that, I knew almost nothing about the Volkswagen Beetle. Well, this movie was requested on Patreon, so I finally went and bought the shimmering, shining Blu-ray, gave it a watch, and, well, let's see. Does it join so many other Disney live-action comedies as an unwatchable, unfunny dud? Or does this one stick out from the rest? This was one of the last movies that Walt Disney had any involvement in before his death in 1966, starring a cast of Buddy Hackett, Dean Jones, Michelle Lee, and David Tomlinson. It's about a magical, lifelike automobile, Herbie, and how it takes the lead as one of the best race cars in the San Francisco area. As the hijinks ensue, the mischievous Peter Thorndike attempts to take the car back into his possession. It's an incredibly simple plot. Seriously, there's nothing really left to say beyond that quick premise. It follows the typical formula found in many other Disney movies, and movies in general. It doesn't have that much intrigue on a character level, or even a craftsmanship level. This was released in 1968, but the film quality almost looks like the early 1950s. If you would have had me guess the year this was released, I would have been very far off. It's even been a few days since I watched it, and I'm already kind of forgetting if there were bigger plot points to bring up. However, the most important part of any comedy is the humor, and how it ages. I can honestly say I laughed quite a few times. I think it helps that while the characters are not too interesting, they have a lot of personality, even if the actors are just doing their typical shticks. Dean Jones is cool and natural, even if he's in this silly looking vehicle. Michelle Lee plays a funny love interest. Buddy Hackett is always charismatic, it's kind of hard to dislike him in anything. The biggest surprise has to be David Tomlinson as Peter Thorndike. Not because I'm shocked he can pull it off, I mean, it's David Tomlinson, of course he can pull it off. But I'm surprised that he never took on more villainous roles. He's well remembered as the father in Mary Poppins, and he's in a few other Disney films. His antagonist turn here is much more akin to something like Cruella de Vil, where the motivations are so obnoxiously ridiculous, it makes him all that more calculating. He has a wide range of funny reactions and screams, he's still doing that almost nervous and bumbling vocal work that made him iconic, but with a sinister flavor that makes for one of the more enjoyable funny bad guys. I think I need to delve into more of Tomlinson's filmography, especially some of his other comedies, because he is delightful here. Of course, the one that steals the show should be Herbie. Well, not exactly. I figured Herbie would be a huge chunk of the screen time, but mostly the car is on screen when the main characters are driving. From knowing the character Herbie, I figured there'd be more independent movements throughout the streets and getting into comical situations. There's still situations, but it's never overdone. Depending how you look at it, that can be a positive or a negative. I mean, you're kind of coming into this knowing it's going to be very cheesy. And yeah, it's cheesy, but not really to the degree that I would expect Disney to go. But there's still some highlights. Herbie drives away after Jim betrays them, and they're driving around San Francisco, and then eventually they go as far as trying to throw themselves off a bridge, attempting suicide. I know, this sounds like a bit much, but I hate to say it, it's so crazy, it's almost kind of funny. I know it's dark, but it's a car. Once you see it, you can't help but be amused. It's not like it's coming out of nowhere either. The car is obviously sad from the betrayal, and amazingly, the emotion is easily readable. For something with an inanimate body, it's fantastic how many different expressions Herbie is able to create. Such a dumb idea, but it works better than it has any reason to. The stunt work is pretty great too. You see Herbie racing a lot, but during the finale, Herbie takes tight corners that nearly tips the car on its side, it goes barreling through the woods, and the most famous scene is when they win the race after the car is literally split in half. 
It's hard not to appreciate the effects of that time, and how it was all done on a practical scale. And there's a lot of laughs to be found. At one point, Herbie hits David Tomlinson so hard, he's thrown into the front hood of the car, and is screaming to be released with his head poking through the glove compartment. Unfortunately, it doesn't leave a lot to discuss, and even as I talk about it, there's a lot I didn't bring up. There's quite a few times where the two racers deliberate on bets, and Herbie is always the prize. They're just trying to win Herbie back, or Dean Jones is trying to keep Herbie in his possession. There's Tang Wu, the business owner who supports Herbie's team in the race, only to have his own secret side bet with Thorndike. There's quite a few romantic moments set aside for the leading couple, but I honestly don't care much for their development. In fact, it seems like Jim and Herbie have more chemistry than Jim has with the leading lady. We are here to see Herbie and the racing. For the driving sequences, it's probably up there as one of the better comedic car movies. But the rest of the stuff can be ignored. Even when there is a plot line, it's very awkwardly structured. It does the misunderstanding cliche almost too early, because once Herbie and Jim obviously make amends, there's still 40 minutes left to go. It's really weird because it feels like things are wrapping up, but we only are at the midway point. Then I have to keep listening to that main theme song over and over again. It's goofy and it fits the tone, but they literally didn't create any other music for this. It's the same track on a loop. I guess I would call it a mixed bag, but I think it delivers exactly what it promises. A silly car movie, emblematic of 60s Disney cinema. If you're a fan of Disney, then you'll probably have a good time. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't curious to check out the sequels. I mean, one of them is literally titled, Herbie Goes Bananas. How can you not check out a movie like that? The Love Bug was not as bad or boring as I thought it would be. In fact, I never got bored. I guess you can say, I had a good time. And I'll probably return to it in the future for the racing scenes in particular. I might even just skip to those scenes, if that's fair. Uh, the weird thing is, Disney actually remade this movie in 1997. It was called The Love Bug, it was on TV, and it starred Bruce frickin' Campbell. So, that one obviously has to be better then, right? Special thanks to Lucas for this Patreon request. Thanks for watching the video, and special shout out to Anthony, Anna, Kirsten, Spencer, Lucas, Ryan, and Robert for the support on Patreon. By joining my Patreon, you can get exclusive videos and blogs, and for only $7, you can request your own movie review. I hope you stick around, cinephile, and have a happy, productive day.